By definition, recursion is when a program calls itself. What this means in practice is taking a problem and solving smaller versions of the same problem repeatedly. Let's take a classic example. Consider this calculation. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 120. This is called 5 factorial and it's written 5 followed by an exclamation mark. It's a well-known mathematical operation. Here's another example, 7 factorial. 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. To put that in general terms, if we take a number n, then n factorial is n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 all the way down to 1. Now let's look at that a different way. 5 factorial is actually 5 times 4 factorial. Furthermore, 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. And another way of stating that is to say 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 factorial. Let's put that in general terms. n factorial is n times n minus 1 factorial. Let's keep this in mind. I'm going to write a program in Visual Basic.net to calculate the factorial of a number. I'll implement this as a function called factorial. This function will take one parameter, n. To keep things simple, I'm not going to specify the data type of this parameter, nor am I going to specify the return type of the function. The first thing I need to do is to test if n equals 1, in which case there's nothing to do. The factorial of 1 is 1. So, if n equals 1, then we will simply return 1 and exit the function. Now, if n isn't equal to 1, we're going to return the factorial of n. And this is where we use recursion. I'm going to return n multiplied by the factorial of n minus 1. And that is pretty much it. So let's see what happens when we call the function. I'm going to pass it the value 5. Five factorial is 120, exactly what we expected. In order to help you understand what's going on during recursion, I'm going to step through this function a line at a time. And I'm going to examine the call stack while I'm doing this. So let's set a breakpoint and run it up again. Now, I've got a couple of windows switched on here as well. I've got my locals window displayed so I can see the contents of any local variables and I'm also displaying my call stack window. At the bottom of the call stack I can see the button event handler and above it on the call stack I can see the first running instance of the factorial function. So let's start stepping. We've called the function and we're passing it the value 5. The first thing we do is test for the base case. If n equals 1, everything stops. Well, it doesn't. And now here comes the recursive call. It's going to attempt to multiply 5 by the factorial of 5 minus 1. In other words, 5 multiplied by 4 factorial. So the function invokes itself. And we can now see a second invocation on the call stack. And this invocation is being passed the value 4. It's going to attempt to calculate 4 factorial. The first invocation is suspended. It's waiting 
for the value of 4 factorial to be passed back so it can multiply it by 5. The first invocation simply has to wait. OK, so let's continue stepping through the second invocation. We test for the base case, and the second invocation wants to multiply 4 by 3 factorial. But to do this, it has to call itself again. And when it does so, we can see we now have a third invocation on the call stack. So let's step into the third invocation, a test for the base case, and then it invokes itself again, this time to calculate 2 factorial. This invocation of the function calls itself again, this time to calculate 1 factorial. And we can see we now have five separate instances of the function sitting on the call stack. This fifth invocation has been past the number 1. So the test for the base case this time is true. And the fifth invocation can return a 1 to its caller. Now notice when I hit the end function line here on the fifth invocation, in the call stack I can see what it's about to return to its caller. It's about to return the value 1. I continue stepping and the fifth invocation has now disappeared from the call stack. We're back into the fourth invocation. And the fourth invocation is now in a position to finish its job. It can multiply 2 by 1. Notice on the end function line here that the fourth invocation is about to return a 2 to its caller. We're now back in the third invocation. We can see the call stack being dismantled. The third invocation is now in a position to multiply 3 by 2 factorial. And therefore, I can see here, the third invocation is about to return the value 6 to its caller. Continue stepping, we're back into the second invocation. The second invocation can multiply 4 by the 6 that it just got back. So this invocation can now return 24 to its caller, namely the first invocation, which can now multiply 5 by 24. And the final invocation can complete. The thing to notice then is that the calculations were taking place while the call stack was being dismantled. Because each running instance of the function was waiting for the one that it called to return something. 